Um, this is the keynote presentation for the One Family Babysitting app. I've chosen the name iSitters. iSitter is being used, but iSitters is not being used, and that's the best I came up with. Um, I like it. Uh, first thing we have to decide is if we're doing one app instead of two apps. The first screen that would come up would be parent or sitter. At the beginning, you'd have to decide which one you are, and this would only come up one time, and we are beginning with a parent. So the home page for the parent side of the app would have um, six different options, schedule, sitters, children, request sitter, parents, about. And at the bottom of the home page, however we put those icons, I know I think I showed you one where it was an actual telephone dial and went around, we have to have these six different options on there. At the bottom screen it will sh of the home page, it will always show upcoming um, babysitting gigs that you have planned. In the beginning, you have to actually add your parents, and this is really important because this is the information you're going to be sharing with the sitters. So you do have to put all your information in there. Um, this is actually a little bit, it's better than the other. I mean, some of the things, we're doing a lot of what the other apps are doing, but we just need to do it better. Um, we need to make sure that there's a many, many, many different ways to get a hold of the parents if the if the babysitters need to. So we'll have both mobile and home and work. Um, and also the emergency contacts will go under the parent profile instead of the children um, because they tend to stay the same from child to child. Now we're going to enter our children. Um, the profile page for entering children, birthday, it'll be a drop-down calendar where you will hit a button and put the, the, the month, day, year, and actually the age should pop up here. Um, the obvious pediatrician, dentist, school, allergies, blood type. These The medication, the activities slash schedule are kind of important because those things change. Medication can be somebody's ill and for the next two weeks they have to take an antibiotic three times a day. Um, that would be something that would be very important to share with your sitters, even if it was a sitter who was once a week or, a, you know, just a random sitter, and also, especially, well, for babies too, the activities in the schedule of children change very frequently. Nap times change, feeding times change, after school enrichment changes, where you pick them up, blah, blah, blah. So this would be something that would a parent would update fairly frequently, and there's an option at the bottom to send to sitters, so you can share this information. When it says send to sitters, you can choose if you're sending them to all the sitters, um, which you probably, you might do, you might not do. I mean, I, I have a list of many sitters and I only use three of them regularly, so the one that I just use randomly wouldn't need to know about a lot of things. And then you are done. So once you've selected the sitter and you decide if you're going to text or email them, um, it will automatically generate an email to be sent or a text to be sent depending on what you decided. Um, we talked about this briefly. It would be really great. We have to decide if it's possible so when information is sent if it can somehow be <clears throat> downloaded to iCal or to a person who has the app or if the text or email actually asks to have specific information which wouldn't be the worst thing but specific information about the medication or the schedule change. We would have to decide how that can be done. Okay, so now we are requesting um, a babysitter. The date and time, it's, it's a drop-down. Um, really, it needs to be a drop-down almost identical to iCal. The, you know, I, I, I'll explain this to you when I'm in front of you, but it, it, one of the things I've read a lot of complaints about is the, is the way that, on the sitter side, how they need, can't really schedule the way that want to multiple days in a row or repeats and a lot of the apps have repeats but it's just really not as good as iCal so we just have to make sure that that is clean. Uh, um, notes. You can do notes um, and the note would probably be a good place to put whatever we're, will end up being seen on a text and the sitters you can select which sitters you'd want to send and additional recipients like Perhaps you want to just CC your husband or a friend or something like that. Request is created. You're almost there. Please note. What happens is they remind you. It doesn't automatically send a text. It actually generates a text, and then you have to send the text. 
text message was sent. Now there's there's two, we need to talk about this. There's two different ways that this happens when a request is sent. One is it's sent and the text has a link saying Catherine Wakefield to send you this, blah, 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 and you hit the link. And on the web page, a graphic comes up like that looks like it's a page from the app that's all fancy that has all the information. The other way is um, just a, just a text is sent, um, and then we could just make that very specific. The, the the ones that I've used really aren't that clear. I think I've sent Ken some of them, but I I wonder if you know I'm using a babysitter who has a phone that's not doesn't have the internet what would happen. So I don't know if this would work. Like if I sent my daughter a request, she has a cell phone, gets text, but she doesn't have internet access. So it's something we need to talk about. Okay, here's an example of a text that would be sent. Hi Esther, blah, blah, blah. Yes, please confirm. No, sorry, it won't work this time. Then the babysitter gets um, a response after they reply. They'll be notified once I confirm. Now on the home page for the parent, the schedule icon has to flash. It has to notify you that there's somebody's awaiting a confirmation. Um, this is important. And perhaps you've asked three different, you need to confirm that it's going to happen, but also because maybe you've asked three different babysitters to babysit and you need to let the other the other three know that you don't want them anymore. Then you would confirm and the babysitter would get a confirmation. Okay, so now we are adding our sitter information. Pretty clear. Um, the ad from con. The From Context button is really helpful. Nobody wants to add all this information in. I, in every, in every situation, actually added From Context, although you can manually add. Um, but we have to be very careful because in all scenarios, the fields did not necessarily link up. For example, um, my phone, my home phone, would always go under the phone contact. They would only, I don't know why, but whenever it, my home phone would go there and whenever I was trying to text, it would actually text to my home. Then we'll have an hourly rate, keeping notes, drop down. Um, I know we talked about rating. I don't really think we need to do rating right now, but if we were going to do it, it would be here. And then um, a place to, to leave notes. Um, this is a big thing right here. We have to figure out a way for a parent to easily gift eye sitter to a sitter. Um, because I don't think, I mean, for me to be able to contact a whole bunch of sitters really easily, especially if they could somehow communicate, I wouldn't hesitate to pay 99 cents to them. Or um, perhaps they would just suggest it, but this would be the page that we would do that. Then if once you're at your home page and you actually go to your sitters, um, it'll be they'll be alphabetical, and then you can see them by name, by hours. Um, if we want to get more complex, we could put it, you know, their addresses in and distance from uh, our home. But that really doesn't make a lot of sense because I think a lot of people don't even have the address of their babysitter. They just kind of have babysitter's information in there. Um, then you can press and open up the entire sitter information and edit and all of that. Okay, so now we are on the sitter side of the app. The home page would have the sitter's information because the sitter also has to share their information with parents. The jobs that they're working on, their calendar, their follow-up, and then a list of their customers. All the sitter information here. Blah, 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 blah. Um, it's pretty, um, pretty, um, it is pretty clear-cut here. There's also the, right here, you would share your contact info with parents. Um, Share and provide text or email, invite parents to buy. So in that text, it needs to have something like this. We have to figure out how to do it. We really have to maximize this, um, getting gifting and inviting people. Okay, so from the home menu, you can go to jobs, and you'll have all these jobs that are listed, and then they're pending or not pending. Um, if, you hit up, if you hit the button pending, it'll open up the job info. info. This is a scheduled job, or you're scheduling a job. The starts and ends are drop-down calendars, um, which I think is great. That makes a lot of sense. But the ones that are out there really kind of have a lot of problems. Like you might start, let's say you start on Friday, September 27th, but today is Wednesday, September 22nd. Like the end date, you have to actually change that to the 27th. It needs to default to the same day because most people will actually start and end on the same day. And then you pick your customer. It goes to the parents page. Um, 
This also would be another place to suggest eye sitters to the parent. So this could be somebody who is calling them up and confirming the sitter is putting their information into the app and then they could send to the parents this confirmation and, and an invitation. A lot of, from the reading the, um, you know, the complaints or the praising of the different apps, a lot of sitters actually use this app just to kind of keep track of stuff. So they, they might even use it actually after the fact, just FYI. Send confirmation to the parent, to Catherine Well, this is a confirmation, blah, blah, blah. Thank you for using iSitters. Okay, under the calendar, I didn't really know how to cut and paste a calendar in here, but it would be a calendar, just like iCal. And you could see a little, if you have an appointment, if you have something scheduled on September 27th, there will be a little black dot. If you click on it, this will come up, and then um, you hit a little arrow or something, you can open up the job. Okay, so this was after the fact, so um, we could click Care Performed. This is something I'm going to talk about when you see another page, but here, in most of the apps, I'm not sure it's the best way to do it, they actually have you validate that you've done the job, and then you have, and then you actually confirm the actual start and end time later on in the actual exact amount later on. So I'm not, I put it in because that's what everybody's doing. I think it's redundant and we can figure out a better way to do that. Hitting validate, yes or no, confirm, follow up, pending payment. Okay, like let's say you're pending payment. Then like you've, you've, you've validated, you've done the job, now you're pending payment. And so there's a, here's the place where you put in when you actually started and when, actu when you actually ended and then you put in um, and then it calculates the exact amount. Uh, one thing we should talk about, it's on my list of things to talk about, but I think once we do, we have this app programmed to be very easy to do Euro and British Pound, which I think we should do both of those. And I also think it'd be pretty easy to just, I mean, I can have it translated for free. So I, you'd have to tell me if that would be a big deal to, once it's all programmed to, to do that. Um, once it performed, months pay, calendar, da, 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 da. Okay, this is a, just a place if somebody, if a sitter wanted to make a comment about the job, this would be the place they could do it. Payment mode was an option on the payment place. These were the different options that they'd use. I threw in barter bucks because get people starting to think about that maybe. Um, then once the, once the um, job has been validated and payment has, can, has been confirmed, it's no longer editable and 